So hello uh, to everyone and anyone watching this. Um, we at the library decided to record this to introduce you to your Latina librarians that you have for Latino Heritage Month. So Lada, if you would like to introduce yourself. Of course. Hello, and thank you for having me. Uh, so my name is Mara Cota, and I am a relatively new member of the San Diego State Library team. I work in the Research Instruction and Outreach Unit. I'm an assistant librarian, or probably it makes more sense to say I'm a reference librarian. So um, you'll meet me on the chat if you come to the library website and ask for research help or directions on there. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited to be here talking to you. Yeah. And I am Erica Esquivel, and I am also a real librarian like Mara. Um, and aside from chat, we also do some instruction for any of you who have taken uh, or will be taking RWS classes. So that's something else that we do. Um, yeah, so aside from that, um, do we want to share where our family is from? Yeah. Um, I always like sharing that, and I will try not to give you the whole genealogy, but um, so I was born here in California, in San Diego, in the, uh, the big fancy town of Chula Vista, um, but my parents are both from Mexico and, and emigrated here with their families when they were little, so my mom's side of the family is from kind of the interior um, of Mexico. Uh, from the states of Michoacan and Jalisco. And then my dad's family is from Baja California. And so um, down in at the kind of the very tip of the peninsula, Cabo San Lucas, La Paz, um, lots of fishermen. So we kind of have people from all over. And then my mom came here and she was like 10 in the late 50s. My dad when he was 15. Um, and yeah, so We've, we haven't been here all that long, but it, I guess it feels like a long time. Yeah. Um, and I guess um, my family, I was also born and raised in California. I'm actually from Los Angeles and um, from the San Fernando Valley, if anyone knows where that is. It's just up north of like proper LA. Um, both my parents are Mexican. Uh, they are from Jerez, Zacatecas, and if you want to be even more specific, they are from little ranchitos outside of Jerez, Zacatecas, and um, their families kind of moved into town, uh, like, later on in the 80s. Um, but both my parents also emigrated over, um, you know, they were going back and forth uh, when they were young and working, but they were both um, married when they were like in their early 20s. And so that's kind of like, so that's kind of when we've uh, established ourselves here. So Zacatecas is one of my favorite state names because yeah. it's got a Z and like the, the sound of the um, sure. consonants. Yeah, I love that, Zacatecas. <laughs> it's fun and it's a beautiful place. Yeah, I've never been. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Mara, what did your academic journey look like? Hmm, um, kind of long, I guess. So, um, my, my family, my parents were always really big on education, and I would say the extended family as well. Um, uh, but my parents were the first in their families to go to college. And um, so I grew up knowing that they had done that and kind of piecing together that that had really sort of changed their situation. And I think it gave them a lot more options, um, kind of when I, where I look at where people landed and the trajectories that they took. So I, I grew up knowing that and kind of expecting that I would go to college. My mom would always joke like, well, it's college isn't for everyone. But I knew that she didn't mean that for me. <laughs> like, I was expected to go to college. Um, and I always wanted to. My parents always said, like, go and study for the joy of it. Um, you'll be able to find a job. Like, even if it isn't the highest paying job or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I had so much support um, behind behind my, um, 
my education and also I'm, I'm a total nerd. I, I like school and, um, you know, different people are good at different things. I just happen to be pretty good at school. So it was the kind of thing that I could enjoy. Um, and so between like the support and, and me liking it, um, I, I did an undergraduate degree in actually literature um, and theater. <laughs> and then I was like, I want to do a master's degree. Um, and I kind of cast about and I ended up at San Diego State and I did a master's degree in history um, with an emphasis in Latin America because I'd always kind of, you know, I, I knew some of it from my parents, but um, I sort of wanted to know it in a more, more formal way. So I did that and um, and then I was like, well, what am I going to do now? And I had some, some different jobs, um, but I've always loved books. I love, love books and reading and kind of the life of the mind. And a few years later, I kind of fell into librarianship and I realized they would pay me to work in a library. And I was like, I'm going to library school. And so I did. And here we are. What about you? Okay, so I am a first generation college student. Um, I have an older sister and she's 10 years older than me um, and she went to community college and I have a younger brother who's a couple years younger than me who went to CSUN, which is a sister school of SDSU. Um, for me, it was also kind of the same, um, except like my parents, you know, they stopped school when they were like in like sixth grade and stuff, you know, and so it was like, they didn't experience college or anything like that themselves, but they always knew of the importance of education and they um, really instilled in me that, you know, like, I, I feel like a lot of people with immigrant parents have that, like, we've, we did, we've had this big journey in our life. We made these big, we took these big steps to come here and like we want you to take advantage of every opportunity that's available to you that wouldn't have been available to you um in like in mexico specifically for us um so yeah i mean my parents have always been really encouraging of education um and and like the best that they could you know because like they um like, you know, my sister, she did all of her community college application, like, in applying to college, it, it was always on us, you know, like, my parents are, were there to help support us, um, you know, like, feeding and clothing and, and, and housing you for us, but, like, it, it was always kind of on us to, you know, figure out things, which is kind of an interesting experience to be self-reliant at a young age. Um, and so I went to um, UCLA for uh, my undergrad, and that's where I studied anthropology. Um, I did take like two years of French, but I didn't apply to the minor, so I don't have it on my degree, uh, which is really sad. Um, and then after that, I took a break from school and I just worked because I had never really had like a, a job job before, even though I did work during undergrad. Um, and I took a break trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I mean, like the whole reason that I really liked anthropology was just like being exposed to different cultures and, you know, learning how to just be understanding and empathetic of people and communities and things like that. And I have always had a really big passion for like cultural heritage materials and stuff. So that's always been kind of big. And then my partner actually uh, started going to grad school, library school and listening to him talk about his classes and the things that they would talk about I was like, oh, this is actually kind of what I really want to do. Like, it sounds like that's something that I'm very passionate about. And um, so I decided to apply and I got in. And so I did, uh, 
I did library school for grad school. And I can say, I'm sorry to interrupt, but like, of course you got in because you're really, <laughs> oh. Well, thank you. Um, but that's just not to, that's not to also say that I didn't love books because I did grow up, like we live right down the street from the library, our um, local public library. And, um, you know, like my mom would just like drop us off at the library while she would walk around the park. And like I had my first library card in since like kindergarten, you know, they walked us over. So reading was always a big thing for me until college and college <laughs> destroyed my love of reading um, that I'm still trying to repair. Uh, but I think that just speaks to like, you don't necessarily have to be uh, obsessed with books to be a librarian. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of my, my journey. I have a librarian friend who says he doesn't read, so, yeah. which is not, it's not totally accurate, but he means he doesn't really do books. Yeah. And, like, yeah, there's so much other reading, and it's not really just about reading, right? It's about what what is happening when you're reading, and it's about learning and exploration. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a total nerd. I mean, I, nothing has been able to destroy my love of reading. <laughs> I was on some, I was for three years straight, I was on this book committee for ALA, and we, I kind of counted once, I think we read close to 400 books one year, yeah. and when we finished, and these are books published for the adult market, and when we finished, and by that I mean grown-ups, because <laughs> I also was a, was a teen librarian for a while, um, uh, I was like, I would put down my committee book and I would pick up just my own, my own book. So I'm, I'm just a dork. <laughs> That's amazing though. I admire that. I yeah, want to get it. there. <laughs> <laughs> It's because I like doing it. I wouldn't have done it otherwise. I mean, that's that's kind of how I live my life. I've been very lucky. And like you were talking about the support from your parents, um, I tend to do things that I like. And if I don't like it, I try to find a way not to do it. <laughs> Very, very good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah go ahead. so I have a question for you. Yeah. So you were talking about how you became a librarian, um, kind of through, you know, through school. But um, like, do you have um, like at what point are you in your career, and are you do you have plans for the immediate future, the far future? Yeah. Okay. So I am an early career librarian. Um, I'm, I try not to say baby librarian because I think it's important to um, get, uh, treat myself with respect uh, in terms of talking about my career. And like you know what you mean, but somebody else might misconstrue it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I just graduated in 2019 and it is uh, October 2020 currently when we're recording this um, and this is actually my first position as a librarian but I have thank you but I have worked in a library before um, and there I worked at the oral history center um, oral history research center in, uh, at UCLA fancy I'm telling you you are fancy <laughs> Thanks. Um, I feel like in terms of become like going through library school, um, I definitely took more classes geared towards like special collections. Mm -hmm. Really anything like I said before, like I just I have a really big passion for cultural heritage materials. And so most of the um, classes that I took were geared towards that and like care of materials. Um, but towards the end, I interned at a community college and um, doing reference, and I found that really fulfilling, and I really enjoyed the teaching. And so at this point, I feel like I don't really have, um, like, I, I'm kind of <laughs> in the, at the point where I'm like, I, ju I just like to try every aspect of being a librarian. Um, and. You know, right now I'm really enjoying being a reference librarian and getting to chat and help students and helping to teach classes for students um, and just learning more about research materials to help people. Um, would I be interested in 
doing more in like special collections yeah of course because that's like really interesting and fun stuff but yeah what about you Mara? that's so cool um uh so i just i just have to say that um whatever you end up doing the library field and academia is so lucky to have you because you're <laughs> You're already brilliant and you're just going to do so many good things. But anyway, um, and it's going to be fun, I hope, for you. But um, yeah, so I'm, I'm in a weird kind of moment because I started in libraries in 2006, I think. Um, and I was a public librarian for like 13 years. And um, I am now an academic librarian. But it's culturally, those, those two fields, as you know, are really different. Um, and so I, I came to a decision last year, a little bit before you graduated. Um, actually, well, that's that's when I quit my job, which is what I was going to say. But previous to that, I came to a decision that the trajectories that were open to me as a public librarian to advance um, were great, but they weren't really the direction I wanted to go in. Um, and I felt like the kind of learning and grow, growing that I wanted to do wasn't available to me. So um, in, in that, because I, I wanted to do something um, a little more academic, it turns out, um, and kind of be in an environment where there's more time um, intentionally given for inquiry um, and research and reflection. Um, and while we're plenty busy, I mean, we do have time to do that. And so I, um, I made a little plan and I had the support of my family. And as you know, culturally, um, it's, it's not looked down upon to like come home. And so I was in the Bay Area, my family was in Southern California. And I said, okay, you guys, to my mom and dad, like, here's what I wanna do. And it's maybe gonna be like six months to a year. Can I come hang out with you? Cause I'm gonna quit my job. <laughs> And then I'm going to do a whole bunch of reading and learning and I'm going to get a job um, at a college or university. And they said yes, they were supportive. And weirdly, it worked. <laughs> so um, I did spend quite a lot of time doing research um, and applying to different positions. And San Diego State was like the place I wanted to be, actually, because I really like some of the things the university is doing um, and the demographics. And that's where my parents went to college. And I just know like it's it's got kind of a kind of a unique ecosystem around it in San Diego so I wanted to be part of that and um, it turns out they were hiring assistant librarians and I got lucky and here we are um, so what I'm leading up to is that I'm like kind of an early career librarian if you look at academic libraries um, even though I did it for 13 years in a public library so it's it's interesting for me because I have, I sort of feel like it's a rebuilding time and I have to like learn a lot. And I, like you, I feel like I want to try everything and I'm just taking stuff in. Um, and then I, I hope to, I, I really like the instruction and, and pedagogy aspect of it. So I hope to be able to um, do that, um, I guess as like my specialty is moving forward, but I don't know. I mean, I also have a history degree um, and I'm, I'm sharpening up my historian skills. Uh, I, I joined the American Historical Association. So I don't know, there's lots of options. Yeah, and can I just say, <laughs> you have, I, f I feel like you have transitioned perfectly and like, to, what is it like a fish to water like uh, thank you you've adapted really well to like this well that's because i'm a total school nerd right <laughs> yeah. thank you you're very kind and there's there's so much to learn um and just to be able to speak the language of academia that was always a hurdle when i was a graduate student the first couple of times is to to talk like an academic, right? And to like to use the big words and to drop the names. Um, and my style tends to be more conversational. So that's like, that's a challenge for me, even though I understand it, I can, you know, I, I feel very comfortable in that environment. Um, but I don't think I talk like an academic yet. Oh, <laughs> and I'm not sure I want to, but we'll see. Well, okay. That, that, is a good segue into the next question. Did you experience imposter syndrome because of your background 
or like just in general, I guess, yeah. to you have to relate to your background. So I think this is such an interesting thing to think about and talk about. Um, I'm a little bit older than you, and so uh, <laughs> probably a lot, but anyway, let's not talk about that. Um, I had not really heard that term much until more recently, um, but obviously we all know it exists, right? And it has always existed. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes it, you feel it because of the things coming out at you or coming at you from outside and sometimes whatever's happening internally. Um, so I suspect that I probably did, but I never really thought about it. Um, something that I, but, but I also think that, um, I don't know, I think, I think maybe we use it for, as like a blanket term for things, for more specific things that are happening. And I'm very ambivalent about that. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Because once we labeled it that way, you like, like the whole uh, yeah, like, kind of a thing. Yeah, um, but certainly the world makes us feel like we're supposed to be a certain thing and we feel we're not. Um, but I also feel like the feeling you're not that thing is a natural part of your growth. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so I, I don't know, like it's super tricky. So I think the long answer is, I don't want to say no. <laughs> Um, I, I don't think I ever felt it because of my background, and I guess I should acknowledge um, that I had a really um, privileged background in all the uses of that word, um, right? So I was very comfortable physically, um, emotionally, mentally. Um, also, I'm quite pale, <laughs> so, um, and, you know, I may be getting into weird waters, but... Um, so my father is more dark-skinned, but my mom is as pale as I am. And, you know, I thought many times growing up that maybe I wasn't experiencing the same kind of reaction from the world because I'm, I'm fair, you know. Um, so maybe I had it a little bit easier. Um, it's, it's a super complicated yeah. question, right? What, what do you think? Um, I mean, I think definitely for sure... Um, I think just maybe just even just what any person who has been told like you're like a gifted student or anything, you know, like when when you've been kind of um, given expectations, you know, and and you've met them like young and like maybe in high school too and then like college is just like where you're like oh like I'm I'm with like the big fish now and I you know and then you're like okay I'm starting to struggle for some things you know like for me I struggled being away from home even though I was at UCLA and I was like 20 minutes away from home that was a real struggle and that affected me um but I feel definitely for sure um, sometimes being in college, just like hearing the different backgrounds that people have, mm -hmm. and you always kind of like talk it up to like, oh, like that's why they might be adjusting better in college, than yeah. they, you know, definitely things like that, I feel. Um, and I think also just like kind of how you were talking about earlier, like, becoming comfortable with talking like an academic yeah. um that's something that is like a real struggle uh for me um i just feel like it like for anyone who's watching like if you want to be a part of academia you know things like if you if you want to be a professor one day if you want to be a lecturer one day it is difficult to navigate that like do I fit in? Do I know all the right terminology? You know, when like some people, or like most people don't even, you know, like most people can't even explain to you how to use pedagogy correctly, yeah. you know? So I think there, for me, it's very much like that part of it. And like, it has been a journey of like, do I belong in academia because I can't adapt as easily as other people have, you know? Let's see, and I think, I, I think 
what's really important to remember is um, every everyone feels this stuff, I will tell you. I mean, there might be like one or two people who don't, but I really doubt it. Like I said, I'm a little bit older and so I'll play my, my old lady card. Um, but I've been in enough uh, meetings and conference seminars and classes where we're all just like listening and then somebody asks a question or maybe I ask the question and someone comes up to me afterwards and they go, I'm so glad you asked because I was wondering the same thing. And I was like, wait, wait. So we all feel the same way, but all of you are just being silent. And so I think um, I think that's really important. And maybe that's why I don't maybe that's why I don't have that strong sense of imposter syndrome anymore. Maybe I did when I was younger. Because I'm just like, no, everybody, a lot of people are not faking it. <laughs> like, we all struggle. Struggle is the only way that you learn, right? You, you don't, you're not born knowing all this stuff. So it's perfectly natural. And I think it needs to be normalized. Um, yeah. That was my little soapbox. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a real thing. And I think it can have its uses, right? It can motivate us. Um, and also, but also I think we have to be really aware, like I read your emails and they're so smart and they're so articulate. And I'm like, I know it's all in there. Um, so, you know, but like you're saying, it's, it might be easier to write it than to say it, you know, than to talk that way. Um, and also that gets into questions of identity. It's like, who do you want to be? Do you want to be a cookie cutter? Not that, not that people are, but there's this idea people have of what an academic is. Um, how does that fit with who you authentically want to be? Yeah, and, and I feel like that's kind of what's exciting about times right now is that like so many people are just like tearing that down um, and just like being like, no, like I can look a certain way, behave a certain way, but I'm confident in my knowledge and I feel like there is definitely that like step of like a lot of people experiencing imposter syndrome in like college and stuff and then now people are just being like no like I know what I know and yeah. you know like it doesn't matter what your initial impressions of me are yeah. like I know my brain and I'm confident in that and yeah. I know that I have a place here. Yes. Yeah, I think knowing your worth is super important. Um, and uh, and also, you know, this idea of expanding the, the legitimate vocabulary that's used. Um, I am super intrigued by that. Um, and you can tell I'm not super academic because I use the word super all the time. Um, <laughs> but it's a great word. Uh, yeah, I, I think there's, there's room for all of the different experiences, right? makes us better so which leads me to does your family understand what you do i love that question um um some of them do <laughs> some don't i have um i remember when i first was it when i was a public librarian we were at one of the many family dinners and an uncle found out i was a librarian he was like oh i i did that one summer um and it turns out he had he had been like an aide shelving books Mm -hmm. And that was his idea of what a librarian was. And I was like, oh, okay. And I'm like, I, I wasn't really going to get into it. Um, he meant well. But yeah, I, I think my parents have a, a pretty good idea of it because we talk a lot. And, um, you know, a couple of other cousins who also uh, went to university. Um, it's a hard thing to describe, don't you find? Like, I can tell them about reference and teaching. But like, what do you do with the other, <laughs> I don't know. 30 hours in your week yeah. for sure I think at least for me um like I do have cousins who went to uh like university in Mexico um but it's just like because they're all so specific you know yeah. for like engineering and blah blah, yeah. blah it's like I don't know what the library system is like there in Mexico so I'm like you know if if my mom tells my aunt like oh we're studying this we're like this is her job it's yeah. like they'll be like oh what is that to their kids yeah. and it's just like oh I don't know it's like this or it's just like completely different so it's, I, 
I just, just the other day, I, I don't know why, I've always struggled to, like, tell my mom, like, what my title is, and then I was like, why don't I just Google it and translate it? Yeah. <laughs> and so finally, like, in the last couple of weeks, I'm like, oh, I'm a bibliotecaria. Like, yes, I, and you studied, I you studied bibliotecología or biblioteconomía, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's just, yeah. that's been interesting. But they still don't get, I'm just like, I, it, it's not just books, it's like, yeah. in, it's information, yeah. and like anything you can do with information, mm -hmm. like that's what you do or work with uh, as a librarian. And it is really different in Mexico. I mean, um, I, I now know a couple of um, what we would call librarians uh, in Mexico and one of them at a university. And it's, um, they tell me it's different. There are very few um, librarians with master's degrees, whereas here pretty much <clears throat> all librarians are required to have a master's degree, right? So yeah, and culturally and like public libraries are just now kind of, well, not now, <clears throat> excuse me, just now, you know, really blooming and starting to have lots of programs like American public libraries. So yeah, it's hard to, and it doesn't have, uh, you're not like a licenciada, right? Yeah. Although technically you are a maestra because yeah. you have a master's degree, which is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, my dad. See, and this is like that, that difference or like that kind of like knowledge gap that leads to like a misunderstanding of things where it's just like, you know, my dad now says that I'm a licenciada. Uh -huh. Like, no, that was, I already had my, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I was a licenciada already before. Like, I have a master's now. I'm, I'm a maestra, technically, you know. And yeah. it's just, like, that weird misunderstanding of, like, how do you translate things and explain things to your parent? Yeah. Necessarily know, you know. Yeah, and I, I think it's like a lot of professions where only your colleagues really understand because they do the same work, but anybody else um, probably has like a real hazy idea of it, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what do you like being about, what do you like about being a librarian, Mata? <laughs> um, most things. Um, I think my, uh, I guess my two top things are that it's a profession primarily um, devoted to service. Like we are a very mission oriented profession and we want to make the world a better place. We really do. And um, we do that one person at a time or one book at a time or whatever you want to call it. Um, that for me is important if I'm going to spend most of my breathing time doing something um because even when i'm not working i'm usually thinking about it uh and then the other thing is that we are we are about learning that's our thing um in whatever way you do it and i think that's it's super important for for the soul for the mind and just fun i love knowing <laughs> i love knowing everything somebody said to me oh sorry that was too much information and i was like nope it's, you can never say that to me. I want all of it. <laughs> like I'm downloading all of your yeah. information and yeah. scoring it. What about you? Um, yeah, I, I think definitely for sure that like, it's a lifelong learning kind of, of a career. Like just that thing of like, you can be a librarian and um, start off like in, a, in, in public libraries and then you can like transition over to academic libraries and you're learning as you go or you know like doing informal slash formalized learning yourself like reading about that or you know you can um, become a cataloging librarian if you decide and it's just like all of there are all these different paths that you can take with like the MLIS degree um, and I, I really like that. I, I, I think, um, I, I hear a lot of people say that like, once you stop learning, you're dead, you know? And so I kind of like that and I don't want to become like, and when I'm older, I don't want to be a person who's like stuck in their ways, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's really big for me. And like kind of tied in that way is like, as librarians, you, 
wear a lot of hats. And for me, it's been a really interesting um, realization to be like, well, like, I'm the teacher. Like, you know, I, I don't have like an education degree. But and even though my title is librarian, like I can be a teacher, I can be a mentor, I can do all of these things, I can help recommend books for people, I can help people find the answers to their questions, like that's uh, something that's really rewarding and makes you feel more fulfilled, like you're not just doing one thing, you can do all of these things. And yeah, I mean, I love the variety, and I really think that, um, you know, any profession can contribute to social change, but I feel like we're kind of intentional about it. You know, we, we want people to have the tools um, to, to think in a more critical, constructive way because it will make society better. Yeah. 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 I think what's also really interesting too is that like we can like do research and we can write papers on like pedagogy and stuff and like what we can do to you know better improve um, our services and interactions with people how you better work with communities and stuff and like it's not there isn't a separation because like yeah. you can since there is that public facing component of it you can practice it immediately and get immediate reaction and you get to see if like everything that you're writing about you know, like in academic jargon, is like actually helpful. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you're, you're not like, everybody. You know, I think some some disciplines have to really work to make that happen. With ours, it's just it's all interwoven. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Um, yeah. No, no, I was going to ask you. I know one of the things we were talking about was advice for other other people. Um, you know, I know we've been throwing around terms like Latinx, Latino, Latina, Hispanic, um, which to me talks about identity. But like, what advice would you give either specifically or or just like generally? Yeah. Okay, so I wrote this down because I've had this uh, just like more again as like an early career librarian, like I'm still learning things, I'm still adapting. Yeah. Um, and I, I wrote it down because I thought this was really important. Um, but I, my main advice is to encourage people, especially if you are like a um, person of color, um, that you, or even just like really any other community that's like not, uh, not white or heteronormative, <laughs> um, is to just learn to trust your instincts. Um, and I can say that for me, I'm still learning to do that. Um, and especially if you're someone who wants to continue in academia, um, you want to be part of that your whole life, you want a career in that, um, you will experience things that you feel are wrong um, and you don't necessarily know why. And it's important to find a community that look like you and have the, um, not the same, but similar experiences as you to help you validate those feelings. Um, because I know I've, as an early career librarian, um, I've, I'm adjusting to things. Um, there are different things like the bureaucracy of it all, the like decorum and professionalism, and you know, like some things can happen and you're like, that doesn't sit right with me. Why does that not sit right with me? And that's why I've really appreciated uh, having you, Mara, as like this My person <laughs> on this journey with me because it's very helpful to have someone who, who's like, no, yeah, like it's, 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 your feelings are valid there. It's a reason why you had like something you know, went up your spine and you're like, yeah. oh, you know, so find a community, you know, for us librarians, there is a, a group there um, that I've found really helpful to help bounce those feelings off of. So find a community. Is the group you mentioned, is it like a, like a, like a professional group or is it just like friends and family that you have? It's 
professionally. Okay. Yeah, it's um, we here. So it's like if anyone who is watching is interested in libraries or working in libraries as a librarian or just a general library worker, staff person, um, they're there and, and they, they're just there for, uh, okay. I, and we were talking about terminology. Yeah. I am not from the academic generation of people saying by, some people say by pop. Oh yeah. I, that seems weird to me because I say POC. So I'm gonna say mm -hmm. POC. Um, and it's a group for people related to what, who work in libraries. Okay. And it's called yeah. um, I know, I like that term, right? It's black indigenous people of color, um, but I, I'm never sure how I should pronounce it. it will kind of like, we have this thing called live guides, live guides. Um, and I'm like, it's library and it's indigenous. So should it be BIPOC? <laughs> um, which is silly. I'm not trying to trivialize something. Um, but yeah, no, that's, that's a, I think, I think that's a really important point is to find people with whom you have commonality um, and who, who bring acceptance. Yeah. Um, because that's just how human beings work. Like we need to feel safe in order to thrive, in order to be able to think and be productive. Um, so do what you got to do um, to get that. Um, yeah. I, I also wrote my thoughts down because I thought this was a really important question for like the five people who might see this. Um, but I also struggle because, so I'm kind of a Pollyanna. Um, and if you're not sure what that is, you may have to go Google. Um, <laughs> not you, but the five people watching. Um, but Pollyanna always was like puppies and rainbows and just wanted everyone to be happy. And I <laughs> sincerely do. Um, you know, I, I think I want everyone to be, uh, to, to feel fulfilled, to feel um, realizados, as we say in Spanish. Um, so there's like a lot of advice, but I think the three things that I think are most important um, is to remember that we always have a choice. We always, always have a choice, even if it's like how we respond to a situation we're in where we feel we don't have a choice, right? So, and no one can take that from us because that's a central thing to being a human being. Um, and then kind of around that is like not letting other people tell you who you are, right? So as people who come from another culture um, or maybe literally another country, there's always this feeling of like, are you one or the other? Can you be both? Are you enough of anything? Um, I'm very grateful to my parents because whatever they did, um, those questions never made me uncomfortable. Um, I see my, when I am an outsider, I see it as a asset because I can see more clearly than the people inside, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I love that. So don't let people tell you who you are and don't worry about it. <laughs> and, and just be willing to learn. Like we were talking about earlier, it's so good for you. Um, and the more you learn, you learn about yourself. And the more you learn about yourself, the more comfortable you are with yourself. And no one can tell you who you are. And I just feel like, um, you know, knowing you have a choice and, and being, being willing to do what it takes to make a choice, um, I think is, is really important. Yeah. Um, I'm a talker. I could stay here for hours. Oh, <laughs> Claim your space. That's okay. a thing that yeah. I learned in grad school. You know, when everyone's talking and mm -hmm. you're just like the only by POC there, it's just like, no, you know what? I am gonna raise my hand and yeah. I'm gonna be like, no, you guys can stop. Um, claim your space. You won't yeah. be there. And I, I started thinking a few years ago, well, probably longer than that, but I remember it was when I was, I was walking back from getting a sprinkles cupcake, um, walking back to my library and I was walking with a friend um, and we were both like trying to make space for the other people on the sidewalk. And I'd been trying to break out of that. And I said to her, no, 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 take up space in the world. <laughs> like, cause as women often, you know, we're, we're just acculturated. Like mm -hmm. don't take up so much space. Like, nope take up space. Yeah. yeah, I like that. All right, cool. And with that, 
Uh, we hope whoever watches this enjoys that and got to know us a little bit better. Um, and just know that we're here for you for all your research slash really anything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you want to know more about being a librarian um, or like, you know, navigating uh, higher education. Yeah. Please feel free to reach out. We're here as support academically and otherwise for you. Yeah. And we love the questions. Yeah. yeah. Questions. Yeah. All right. So, uh... <laughs>